In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at some design tips, some different ways that we can use Fusion to make our models. So we're gonna start off just by using some simple sketches and taking it from there and looking at some concepts and some ideas that we've not yet covered in this course. So if we go into our top-down view, I'm just gonna go into Sketch. I'm gonna select our Z-plane here. I'm gonna start off by just making a very basic shape so we can work off of. So I'm using a two-point rectangle starting off on the datum position and just drawing out a hundred millimeter square uh, sketch here and finishing the sketch now i'm going to give this a bit of meat to it make it 3d by hitting q on the keyboard selecting our part and pull it up so i'm going to make this 20 millimeters thick okay so now we've got a billet to work off of so the first thing i want to take a look at is if we wish to design something in the middle of here how do we draw it now we could maybe select this plane here and draw it on there. But this is a way I like to draw and we can manipulate the planes and the working planes. So what I wanna do is just draw a sketch in the center line of that protruding up from the part. So this is how we do it. We go to create sketch. Now see here we have our working planes as well as our faces. So we can select any of these planes to be able to draw straight onto. And we can select any face of the part also. But what I wanna do is project this plane into the middle. So at the moment it's on the datum position, but we can move these planes around. So this is how we do that. So we can adjust our working planes by going into the construct menu. So we've got lots of options here. Um, to find a plane in the middle of this, we would use mid plane. So let's see how this works. So we click on this. So it's asking us to select some planes so we can find the midpoint. Now we can either select on planes or faces of our part. So if we click on this face here, and the one on the other side. The mid plane would put the plane exactly in the middle of those two. So now we can sketch on that. So if I click on OK. We can now go to sketch and select this plane here. So now when we sketch, we're sketching in the middle of the part. So if I just go to the line tool and just draw a triangle like so, something like that, and finish sketch, you can see it comes up right in the middle of our part. So that's how we find the middle point. Now, if we go to construction and use the offset plane, this is the one that you find yourself using the most. So if we click on offset plane, we can click on any plane on our part. So I'm gonna click on this one. And now we can offset it anywhere we like along that axis. So we could set it to minus 50 millimeters, for example, to give us a center plane if we didn't use the mid plane. Or we set it to any distance we require. So if we set this to minus 20 millimeters, for example, it would sit it there and then we can go to create sketch click on that plane and then we can sketch on that plane also so again a little triangle just to show how that looks and finish sketch so there you see there's our two little triangles we pulled up on those two planes and when we're building like this if we're going to make this solid we can for example the one in the center line we can put meat to it on both directions at the same time so it keeps everything in the center line that's when we're going into making this a 3D solid. Because we haven't joined up the bottom there, I don't think I can. So let's just go in and do that. So let's go into Create Sketch, L for Line Tool. I'm going to connect that bottom there with a line and finish sketch. So now we've got our triangle in the middle of our center line. So now we can extrude that out in either direction by using Press Pull or Extrude. So that's how we put our shapes when we're designing into our unusual places. We just offset the working plane by using offset plane or mid plane. And we've got some other options here also. Now, honestly, I don't really use the rest of this. I find everything I need to do as far as making milling parts are concerned. It's just by using offset plane and mid plane. But Fusion is very capable of doing a lot more than just making milling parts. So that's why I'm not going into all the rest of these. Although there probably is uses there. It's not necessarily needed to make a part for a milling machine. Now another important thing with Fusion is we can use models, we can make two objects, join them together, or use one to cut the other one. And that's what I want to look at now. So let's start off with deleting these sketches or I can just turn them off into our sketch menu. So drop down our sketch box and just turn off all these sketches. And that's got rid of our little triangles we built on our part here. Let's have a look at the difference how we can join or cut objects. So I'm just going to create a quick sphere and I'm gonna draw it in the middle of this. So about there somewhere. Something like that. Okay, so there is our 
sphere in the middle there. So at the moment, I've just selected join. So these two bodies would be joined together as one. So we'd have a flat shape here with our bulge sticking out. And if we go to cut, so it removes one from the other. So this is how we get some really interesting shapes. So if you have a shape you can't quite model correctly, maybe this is the solution to it. So you would make another shape and then use that to cut holes in the first shape. So if I just click on OK, we can see what this looks like. And now we've got a spherical radius hole that's going through the job there where it's just removed that ball from our material. So quite often we might have a shape we can't quite work out how we're going to design and that could well be the answer by using another shape to cut the original part. So here's a couple of quick tips when we're sketching. So if we're drawing, we push L on the keyboard to bring up our line tool and we can draw freely. So as we're doing this, as you can see on this, we've got both a length and a angle and we can change them, we can add to that. So on the length here, I can type in say 30 millimeters and then we can switch to the angle by pressing the tab key and then we can give it an angle also. So I can say 150 degrees, for example, hit return. So when we're sketching our part and we wish to add dimensions, we can switch past them by using the tab key. So that again, so we've got a two different things there. We have a length and an angle and we switch between them by pushing the tab key like that. So we can change either one as we go. Okay, so another quick tip is as we're drawing round, our line tool always connects. And there's a few ways we can stop that from connecting. We can push the escape key to stop that. Or as we're drawing, we can we have this tick here. We can click on that tick there and that also stops our line. So we can just draw a single line rather than a complete closed shape by using that technique. So we have a few ways of finishing our lines off. We can either click on the tick box, we can hit the escape key, or we can just double click the left mouse button. So there's three different ways of ending this line. So double clicking would do that. It would put it into place. So when selecting stuff, we have a selection box like this. Like a lot of PC software, we can draw a box around something to select it. But Fusion has other ways of dealing with things. So if we use the, if we drag this box left, we have to select the entire part. If I take these two, for example, it would select this one, but not this one, because as we drew our box, we had the entire part of the top lines it's selected. But this bottom section here, not all of it was selected, so that didn't get selected. So when we're left clicking and dragging to make a selection box, only things that the entire feature is inside the box will be selected. Now, if we want to just select parts of these and select everything just by highlighting a part, we would drag to the left and we get a different selection box here. So let's drag in towards the left and that's dragging towards the right. So if we drag towards the left, and we only have parts of these two lines in our selection box, it will highlight them for us. And if we drag to the right, it would only highlight the one that was fully in the selection box. So that's some quick fusion tips that will help you be more productive when you're doing the design and the sketch side of building your product.